The iPad 3rd generation was released in March of 2012, being a very strong upgrade to the already great iPad 2, bringing Apple's great new Retina display to the iPad line, an upgraded A5X chip over the A5 in the iPad 2. It also had a full gigabyte of RAM, double that of the iPad 2. So why is it considered one of the worst iPads? Let's find out. Screen becomes this good. Colors are more vibrant. Words are pin sharp. Everything is more brilliant. Because when a screen becomes this good, it's simply you and the things you care about. The stunning retina display on the new iPad. The main reason for the disappointment did not come from the day of its release, but rather the day it was discontinued, which wasn't even a full year. It was discontinued in the October of the same year and replaced by the much improved iPad 4. It was only on sale from March to October, so people who bought it were pretty upset that it was replaced so soon, which was understandable. No one expects a device to be replaced in the same year it was released, especially with all new things that brought to the table. The stunning retina display, an improved camera system for FaceTime, an A5X chip, and double the RAM. Despite all this, the iPad 4 was marginally better, with an A6X chip as well as the new lightning connector being two of the main improvements. Fun fact, if you bought the iPad 4 back in 2012 with 128 gigs of storage, you had the most powerful iOS device running iOS 6. Because of the sudden release of the much better iPad, it left people who bought the iPad 3 having it no longer being the latest and greatest product much sooner than expected. Quite annoying, but at least that had a good life, right? The iPad 3 went from iOS 5 to iOS 9, ending support on the same version as the iPad 2. A bit confusing considering it had double the RAM and two extra GPU cores, right? Well, remember that retina display? It's quite power hungry, so pretty much all of that extra power goes towards powering that display, meaning that the power it has left is only slightly better than the iPad 2, which is why they both got left on iOS 9. But maybe they shouldn't have even gotten there. It's what some people call the A5 chip curse. Whilst all devices running with the A5 chip got left on iOS 9, which is a bit too power hungry for these devices, leaving all of them feeling slow and unresponsive, which is even more annoying considering how much of a leap in power that chip had back in the day. Having a dual core CPU, the iPad 3 can perform slightly better due to the upgraded specs, but it's still a frustrating experience. What's more frustrating the iPad 3 uses is that the iPad it got replaced by, and the iPad 4, was a smooth and responsive experience on iOS 10 despite only being 7 months newer. The upside of being given this version is that if you go looking for it, some apps will still run okay on it. Due to having a retina display, this does make for a good Netflix machine. Combining this with some legacy games, it makes for a good tablet for a kid or something. And if it gets damaged, it's not too much of an issue as it doesn't have a whole lot of value anymore. Talking about damaging it, let's see what there is to damage. It features the same design as the iPad 2, with two colour options available for the front, black and white. It has a curved back, which makes it rather comfortable to hold. This back looks the same for both colours. In the top of the device, you can see the headphone jack and lock button. On the side, we've got the volume buttons and rotation lock. And on the other side, there's a SIM card tray, because back in the day, you had the option to put a SIM card in to connect a 4G network, which is rather impressive considering the latest iPhone, the 4S didn't have 4G support. Down on the bottom of the device, there's the iconic 30 pin dock, as well as the speaker grill. It's a good, durable design that will survive if dropped on its back. Not so much for the front, but a screen protector will help in that department. On the inside is Apple's A5X chip, which to simplify, is the same chip, just with two extra GPU cores. There's also a full gigabyte of RAM, the massive 11,560 milliamp hour battery, thanks to the massive design. For reference, the iPhone 14 Pro Max features a 4,320 milliamp hour battery. But the iPhone is optimized a lot better and has a smaller screen. Therefore, it claims to have double the amount of screen on time as the iPad 3. The Retina screen, however, did chew up a decent amount of the battery's power when in use. 
There's also a good chance that a lot of the batteries in these older iPads have degraded to the point it won't last more than an hour. That's not the case for mine, and since the battery is so large, it's gonna take longer to notice. But it all depends on how they've been treated over the years to play a big factor into how it performs today. On the back, there was an upgraded 5 megapixel camera. A big upgrade from the 0.7 megapixel camera on the iPad 2. Looking at photos taken on it, they're not great by today's mobile device standards, but fine for the time, with critics even praising its performance for photos and videos. Apple never used to put their best sensors in their tablets, which is understandable, because you're not really taking many photos on it. The front camera was a 0.3 megapixel sensor, also not really much good, but would be fine for FaceTime, which is still a fairly new and big thing at the start of 2012, so the front camera would do just fine for that. Doing just fine is a pretty good way to sum up how this iPad is doing 11 years down the road. The silver lining of being supported too long means better app support. It's probably the fastest of the devices left on iOS 9, so it's not as bad of a trade-off as the others. Scrolling around here, the, these are the apps that downloaded from my library. Most of them just use the latest compatible version. Some run better than others because when designing it, they had other devices like the iPad Air 2 and iPad Pro in mind, which have much more power than the iPad 3. Some old games and streaming services do the job for just what you'd expect. To sum up, the iPad 3 had a pretty confusing life, overshadowed by the iPad 4 too quickly and being slower than most devices left on its final version. But being an okay device for a kid should it be lying around in a cupboard or something. If you have one, I recommend using it. There's a lot of use you can get out of old devices. Messing around with an old device doesn't pose as much of a risk as a new iPad. So that's about it for today. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed, maybe consider subscribing and leaving.